What's happening, Hardscapers? This is episode 172 of the How to Hardscape podcast, where we talk about how you can start and grow your hardscaping business. And today's episode is brought to you by Cycle CPA. If you need bookkeeping, accounting, or CFO services, you definitely want to reach out to them at cyclecpa.com. Let them know how to hardscape sent you so that you can get $200 off your package there. And thank you to Cycle CPA for sponsoring the How to Hardscape podcast. And on today's episode, I just want to sit down and talk to you listening here today about risk for the most part. This is something that has kind of stuck in my mind the few the past few weeks or so just thinking about risk in business and in life in general. I don't typically take a lot of episodes to for me to just sit down and talk into a microphone. So when I do, it's usually because something has been nagging at me or just sticking in my mind for a little while. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So for the most part in this episode, I want to talk about risk and what that necessarily means to me as a business owner. Before we get into that, I do want to take the time to say thank you for listening to the How to Hardscape podcast. Thank you for supporting the How to Hardscape podcast. We are coming up on three years. This is episode 172. For the most part, we've published an episode once a week. Every once in a while, we post a couple or maybe even three a week. That's why in three years, we're at 172 episodes and not 156, I guess. So I do want to say thank you for continuing to support the podcast, whether that means downloading an episode, listening to it, engaging with me on Instagram through How to Hardscape, through I Am a Hardscaper, for following, for shooting us DMs about possible topics to get into in the future, which we've had a small influx of that recently, which I really do appreciate because I want to keep these episodes coming to you very evergreen, meaning you could listen to them today or 10 years from now and still get some value out of it, as well as I don't want to repeat themes in these episodes as much as possible. That gets more and more difficult, especially as we bring on business owners that those themes will tend to be repeated regardless. But for the most part, when I bring on an industry expert in some way or uh, whatever it might be, I, I want to keep the themes repeating to a minimal so that we can keep episode as engaging and educational as possible for the future. That gets more and more tricky to do. It gets uh, more and more difficult to do. I'm constantly consuming content, whether that's podcasts, audiobooks, uh, and just social media in general to try to find the right guests to bring on the show. And if you've reached out to be on the show, I really, really do appreciate that and your interest in doing so. Uh, For the most part, I am taking requests from people that have already been on the show, that just kind of helps me in in making sure that uh, we don't get overwhelmed with the number of people requesting to be on the show. So every guest that you hear, I've either engaged with them in some way or in another, whether that's in, engaging with their content over many months or even years for some cases with like audiobooks and you know, people that I I watch and listen to online, or they were just recommended from a previous guest that we've had on the show. So that really helps me in being able to bring you the highest quality content that I possibly can. I have an earbud in my ear for the most part, probably upwards of 10 hours a day. And that's listening to content to try to get to know people before I bring them on the show to ensure that the highest quality guests are coming on the show constantly and consistently. So that's something that I do not just for this podcast, but also for myself in trying to better myself and to uh, learn as much as I possibly can in the industry and also outside of the industry when it comes to business. The number of emails that I've sent out to guests that are more than likely beyond my reach 
and I, I do try to personalize those emails. So those emails do take some time. And I do try to follow up on those emails. There's probably 20, 30 guests that I've reached out uh, to hopefully get in touch with them in the future and have them on the show to be able to someday get them on the show. And that has paid off in the past. Guests like Sean Van Dyke of Profit First for Contractors has been on the show. And a lot of that was just reaching out to him and, and you know, letting him know that I did actually read his book and how valuable it was to me and how valuable it would be to the audience here. So, um, you know, those emails do hopefully eventually pay off. Uh, Mike McCallowitz of also Profit First, uh, the original author of Profit First, was on the show after I emailed him a few times. And uh, I, I hope to continue that ball rolling here. And that really is only possible because of you listening in each and every week, uh, you sharing the content, which I really do appreciate, or just engaging with the content somehow. Uh, like I said, through this podcast, through our socials, through uh, my YouTube channel that I've been working on building as well. That's I Am a Hardscaper. So for the most part, How to Hardscape is more community driven, where you'll see on our Instagram is uh, community pictures, community posts from other contractors. The podcast is very much community driven. I am a hardscaper on the other hand is more so if you want to learn more about me, my business, my very small business that I've got going on and uh, anything that you want to learn about uh, me on a personal end there is I am a hardscaper. That's through social channels, through YouTube, whatever it might be. And once again, How to Hardscape is more this community here that we are building. And I just wanted to take the time today in today's episode to thank you. Like I said, I don't get too many opportunities to sit down and go ahead and do this and and thank you and get the time to thank you on this podcast. So when I do get that opportunity, I take it and I do really very much appreciate you as well as uh, one of actually one of the biggest things that if I could ask for you to do if you haven't already is to leave a rating and review. Those have really helped in the past and it's been a while so since I've really asked for a rating and review. So Apple Podcasts, if you leave a rating, like a star rating, hopefully a five star, and then you actually take the time to write out a review, however short or long that might be, that really, really does help the podcast and uh, and to help grow the podcast as well as on Spotify. If you leave a rating there, that's just a star rating. There's no room for reviews there. But we actually, myself, Paver King and Chad of the Landscape Daddy or Natural Design Landscapes recently started a brand new podcast that's called Not Our Finest Hour. And if you listen to the previous episode, I had them on the show on here on How to Hardscape, just taking community questions there. And the biggest thing there, the biggest momentum for that podcast in at least like ranking in the charts and getting more downloads was getting reviews. So reviews really just showed me how important those are to accumulate those and and how much that helps the podcast. So if you would take a moment to be able to do that, I would very much appreciate it. I just want to take a break from today's episode to talk about our sponsor, Cycle CPA. You may have a CRM or project management software in place, but what data are you using to ensure your estimating is accurate? Having a proper accounting setup and accurate bookkeeping done is key to understanding overhead expenses and other costs that must be recouped in your estimates. Cycle CPA is a remote bookkeeping and CFO firm that helps to connect the dots from the financial reports to the hardscape and landscape data needed in order to reach high profits. They provide landscape and hardscape industry benchmarking, job costing financials by service line, advisory meetings, and much more. Cycle CPA's team of accountants are specialized within the hardscape and landscape industry, and you can visit them at cyclecpa.com and for $200 off, mention the How to Hardscape podcast. Now back to our episode. Anyways, I wanted to talk about risk and This has really stuck with me since I started the business and even before I started the business. Back in 2014, 
the uh, concept of podcasts was introduced to me. And that's when I started to really dabble in this online side of things. But even before then, I was creating things online and putting it out there. It wasn't until that 2014 moment that I really thought about, you know, getting more into the online space and growing an online business and whatnot. And I say that because that was my introduction to actually starting a business. Before then, I hadn't even really wrap my head around what it would look like for me to start a business. And the most obvious thing for me to do was to start a, a landscaping business, a hardscaping business, because of my time working for a supplier and working on the side, even through working on the side from, you know, the early 2010s. I don't even know when I started doing work on the side after my introduction into the industry 2007 ish. I don't even know when my side job started, but even working on the side, I never really wrapped my head around going full time into starting a hardscaping business. I always thought like I've got a full time job. It's going good and I can make a little bit of money working on the side as well. That was always my thought process there. It wasn't until late in the 2010s where I hit a point in my life where I needed to decide whether or not I was, you know, what my next steps were in my life. And I sat down and I thought about what a hardscaping business would look like for me. And I did put a lot of thought into this because money resources were was not an option for me in starting a business. I'm fairly debt adverse as well as fairly newly married. Um, that all played a factor into why and how I started a business. But when I thought about starting a business and, and I talked to my wife about it, the biggest thing that came to mind was this idea of risk. And I thought about this concept of risk. And back then, a big risk to me was starting my own hardscaping business, was to leave my full-time job and do this full-time. That was a big risk to me. But looking back on it, that was not a big risk at all because worst case scenario, it didn't go well. I lost maybe a little bit of money, the opportunity cost of what I could have done, however much time I wasted trying to grow the hardscaping business and just go back to my full-time job or whatever. But regardless of that, I thought it was risky to start a hardscaping business when in reality, the bigger risk was what the question mark was if I continued working at my full-time job. What would that look like for my life? That was actually the bigger risk. And that brings me to what I think about risk in, in business and in life is that no matter what choice you choose, there's always risk involved. And there's so many ways that I can relate this to. Whether you think you're making a decision or you're not making a decision, there's risk involved in that decision or that lack of decision. My risk in starting my hardscaping business, like I outlined, could have failed. And I had a plan B. I could have just gone back into my full-time gig there. But in reality, the bigger risk to me personally, my life, was continuing with my full-time job. And then, you know, wherever that led me to, Thankfully, the hardscaping business is going well, and I now look back at that and I can say this, right? That it could have, you know, gone bad and I would have had to gone back to my hardscaping business. And maybe I would have a different outlook on that risky decision that I made back then. But on the outlook that I have now, based on my experience, I can confidently say that the biggest risk would have been sticking with my full time job just based on how the cards were laid. But I could always look back if this hardscaping business failed to say, at least I tried, at least I went out there, I tried to start my own business and it, it failed, it went under. I could at least have that experience and I could at least, I could at least always look back on it and say, at least I tried. Because I'm also interested in 
personal finance on that side of things as well. I also can relate this to, say, investing into the market. There's risk involved in putting your money into the stock market, and that's an obvious risk. And, you know, I've spoken to people and, you know, they look at that risk and they'd rather keep it in their own pocket or invest in their own business with that excess money or however they choose to do with that money because they look at the stock market and maybe based on their experiences, they are not willing to put their money into that stock market because they calculate that risk and they don't like the way that it looks to them. So in their eyes, if they don't make the decision to make that investment, and this can also be related to a business investment as well. And actually that actually relates more so to my story, which I'll get into. But if they don't make that decision to invest into the stock market, that they're thinking there's no risk involved in that by making a lack of a decision, by making no decision with that. But in reality, there is a risk involved in not making that decision, in not making that investment. The risk in a personal finance sense is inflation. Inflation eats away at your money. And that is the risk. That's a very defined risk. It's absolutely going to happen. And inflation happens year in and year out, no matter what. Sometimes more so than others like we're experiencing right now. But regardless, that inflation is going to eat out your money as well as the opportunity cost that comes with the stock market. Now you could look at the stock market and say, if I would have invested at this time, at this point in time, we're down a, a whole lot of money. So that it would be a risk. And that's looking at it retrospectively. If I would have invested at January at the beginning of this year, at this point in time, I'm down. That's an even bigger risk than what inflation would have done to me. But that's where the calculation comes in because you always want to make a calculated risk and you can't time the stock market, but you can say put in a process that allows you to get the average return over a certain amount of time. For example, dollar cost averaging, where you're putting a specific number of money in month in and month out or whatever that time frame is, because over that time period, you're getting an average of the market and that's going to play out in the long term. Because in a longer term period, a long term period in the stock market, it has gone up in short term periods. You could pick away at any short term period and say, well, no, it's gone down in this period. But over a long term, if you were to dollar cost average, if you were to invest consistently a specific dollar amount over a certain number of months, a certain dollar amount, you are going to see that average capture of the market and you'll see your investment grow over that time period. The same thing can be said about investing into your business, which I alluded to before. And with me, my business, when I started my business, we were in year eight or nine of a bull market of only seeing a positive in the stock market in you know our work coming in consistently and they say that there's an eight year average of a bull run before a bear cycle in the market where we may see a pullback, sometimes a recession, whatever that might look like in the market. So when I started my business, I looked at that and I said, I'm going to keep my business very lean. I'm going to keep it very low overhead. I've been doing lift and relays on the side. I can continue to do that. I can leverage my network in my small area. And I know that these contractors are not wanting to do lift and relays. So it's a great area for me to slip into, provide value in my market to not only clients, but also contractors in my area, exchange referrals. And that's where I would fit in in the market. And by doing so, I'm prepared that if next year, at the time I started my business, if next year we hit a downturn, if work starts to you know slow down a little bit, we're not seeing the same amount of people looking for hardscaping work because of this downturn, because of a possible recession, it's then that I would be rewarded for staying lean. That was the risk calculated in my head, making a calculated decision as to how I would start and run my business for that short period of time, because I knew I could bank money in that short period of time 
And if a recession hit, I would then be able to pull the trigger and be able to invest into my business with this lump sum of money when others may be experiencing a pullback in their business. And maybe they're liquidating equipment to be able, uh, be able to stay afloat or you know, they're laying off employees or whatever. That's the time that I figured I would start to grow my business as long as I had that capital reserve in hand. So that was my calculated risk. I made that decision. And at that time, the risk reward was being lean and being able to follow through with this plan. The other side of the coin was, well, what if we don't experience that recession? I'm kind of leaving money on the table by not reinvesting heavily into my business and really starting to grow it. But it would just made sense where I was personally in life, as well as in a business sense at the time, I thought, to be able to remain lean. Now, fast forward a couple of years and I changed my business model slightly moving from lift and relays to more design builds. And then we hit the pandemic where we experienced two years of demand like we've never seen before. And that's something that I didn't account for. And that's that risk coming into play. In my mind, the risk was that we would eventually hit a recession and I don't wanna be heavily invested into my business. And to experience that recession, when I'm stretched too thin. So stay lean, get through that recession and be better on the other side of it. But what I didn't include in my calculation of that risk was this two year period of this increased demand. And I definitely left money on the table in doing so. And that just brings me back to that point of risk and choosing a less risky path is not always a less risky decision. There's money that I definitely left on the table in these past two years on the flip side of things, I wouldn't have changed my business any other way. Personally, the resources weren't there to pour into my business right away. And I am happy in the position that I currently am in with my business. And I do have that capital reserve now in place to be able to pull the trigger on whatever it might be that I need to grow my business to get my business to the next level. It would have been nice to have that capital reserve in place prior to these two years that we've experienced and to identify beforehand that we would experience this high demand. But everything in retrospect, everything is easier. Hindsight is twenty twenty. We can look back and say, of course, I should have done that. Uh, but in the time, you can't predict, you know, certain market cycles. You can only use the information available to you to be able to make these decisions. But at the same time, you got to understand that choosing a path that seems like lower risk does not mean that there's no risk involved in the other decision. But you got to understand that choosing the path that seems like there's lower risk does not always necessarily mean that there is lower risk in that decision. There could be actually a higher risk in that decision, but you may only know that with the way things work out. And this can be applied to personal life, business life, whatever that may be. Don't always decide that. So would I go back and look at my business and do things differently? I wouldn't just based on how I know where I am personally, as opposed to the business life, like where I personally am, where uh, I am currently situated and, and located, I am, it, it wouldn't have made sense to go all in on my business because I know that in a moment's time, we could be relocating uh, depending on where we actually live for the longer term and where we actually put roots down, it wouldn't have made sense for me to build a business and invest in a location dependent business where we could be a hundred kilometers away in a year's time. And I would want to bring the business further into that location. So that's something that, you know, personal decisions 
play a major factor in my bus- business decisions, even though uh, I hope one day that they don't. But ultimately, I, I look back at the time when I worked full time outside, not even having a business. And there was a moment where I thought just remaining in that space in not starting my own business and how much of a mistake that would have been because it seemed at that time that that was the lower risk decision when in reality it was a it was a much higher risk decision to you know work however many more years full time for somebody else and then to get to a point where that's what i need to do forever because it gets more and more risky to start a business and more and more difficult to start a business as I grow a family or whatever the future holds in store for me for that. But I really hope this actually makes some sort of sense. It's been a long week. It's been a long day. And uh, I thought I'd sit down and talk about what's on my mind with this. I hope there was something in here that gets you thinking about your decisions, uh, both personally and in business. Don't worry, there aren't many episodes where I'm going to sit down and just talk about what's on my mind. This is just something that has been eating away at me and I really wanted to kind of talk this through on the podcast. I guess use this podcast as more of a way to vent in order to get these ideas off my mind. If you have anything you want to add to this, shoot us a message at How to Hardscape on Instagram. Let me know what you think about anything that I talked about in this I don't even remember what I talked about Uh, like I said long day long week and uh, just kind of unwinding after this difficult time if you want more from how to hardscape I am a hardscaper if you want video content go check out I am a hardscaper on YouTube if you want more podcasts go check out not our finest hour that's got me paver king and the landscape daddy Chad there from natural design landscapes on every Friday where we just sit down and talk kind of like this on whatever is on our mind, whatever we've been going through, uh, things that just come up in conversation. It's literally just three contractors sitting down and enjoying a lighthearted conversation and uh, really anything goes in those conversations there. And thank you for listening to today's episode of the How to Hardscape podcast. Once again, thank you Cycle CPA for sponsoring today's episode. Go check them out, cyclecpa.com. Get $200 off of bookkeeping, accounting, or CFO services with them when you mention How to Hardscape. And get your books in order. Get your financials in order. Get to know your numbers a little bit more with their guidance. And we look forward to meeting with you next week on the How to Hardscape podcast.